Howdy friends, a number of years ago I said to my mother, who was born in 1945, Mum, how many fat kids were there in your class at school? And she said, none. Now I was born in 1964, and in my class at school, class of around about 30 pupils, there were two fat kids. One was the son of a pub landlord and he was tall and very well built so it might have something to do with pub grub and the other fellow was quite affectionately known as Chips and that was the staple of his diet hence the name. Now, this morning I watched a video that reminded me of Twinkies and this, or these images were actually taken in Tesco's on their shelves. I didn't buy them, I just took the photographs and as you can see got Twinkies, we've got Twinkie the Kid, we've got the nutritional information, and we've got the ingredients. Now, there's a warning, E129 and E102 may have, may have an adverse effect on activity and intention in children. And the asterisk, it means that um, the ingredient is derived from a genetically modified source. So, make of that what you will. Don't know why food needs to be genetically modified. Anyway, that's my personal opinion. And that's when my journey began. Okay, so <clears throat> those images were taken over a year ago. It was the 6th of November 2018. And what I did want to do was check whether or not Tesco was still actually selling Twinkies. And I'm on their website here, their shopping website, and they actually are for sale. Okay. Now, ingredients, what have we got? We've got ingredients that promote ADHD, attention, deficit, hyperactivity, disorder. Okay, this is on the NHS website let's see what they've got to say attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a behavioral disorder that includes symptoms such as inattentiveness hyperactivity and impulsiveness symptoms of ADHD tend to be noticed at an early age and may become more noticeable when a child's circumstances change such as when they start school, such as when they start school, okay, that's quite bizarre. Most cases are diagnosed when children are 6 to 12 years old, formative years. Now, what ADHD does do, I'll point this out now, while it's in my mind, is it creates criminals if you're inattentive you don't learn if you're hyperactive you get rebuked for being hyperactive in class and you're impulsive okay that means acting without thought or consideration so what they've actually done at school is created 
conditions that create criminals, future criminals. Okay? The symptoms of ADHD usually improve with age, but many adults who are diagnosed with a condition at a young age continue to experience problems. They end up in prison, etc., etc., if you get my drift. People with ADHD may also have additional problems such as sleep and anxiety disorders. Okay, I'm sure you understand where this is going. Put the kettle on because this is long. Many children go through phases when they're restless or inattentive. This is often completely normal and does not necessarily mean they have ADHD until they get to school. You should consider raising your concerns with your child's teacher, 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 teaching false indoctrination, the school special educational needs coordinator, or a GP, a GP, the administer, the administer of vaccines, treatments that are conducive to illness etc. I think you get my drift. It's also a good idea to speak to a GP if you're an adult and think you may have ADHD but were not diagnosed with the condition as a child. What causes attention deficit hyperactivity disorder? The exact cause of ADHD is unknown. However, is it anything to do with the food? But the condition has been shown to run in families. Is that true? Research has also identified a number of possible differences in the brains of people with ADHD when compared with those without the condition. It's going to be the diet. Other factors suggested as potentially having a role in ADHD include being born prematurely, having a low birth weight, Smoking or alcohol or drug abuse during pregnancy. ADHD can occur in people of any intellectual ability, although it's more co common in people with learning difficulties. Now, where do learning difficulties come from? Poisons, toxins, etc. I don't need to explain it. Although there's no cure for ADHD, it can be managed with appropriate educational support, advice and support or parents and affected children alongside medication. More vaccines, more big pharma, if necessary. Medicine is often the first treatment. The first treatment really should be food that doesn't contain ADHD causing ingredients. The first treatment offered to adults with ADHD, although psychological therapies such as cognitive behavioural therapy, CBT, may also help. Looking after a child with ADHD can be challenging, but it's important to remember that they cannot help their behaviour because the parents are buying junk, crap, shite food laced with ADHD causing ingredients. Some issues that may arise in day-to-day -day life include getting your child to sleep at night, getting ready for school on time, listening to and carrying out instructions, being organised, social occasions, shopping. Adults with ADHD may also find they have similar problems and some may have issues with relationships or social interaction. Page last reviewed then, 2018. Okay. Links will be in the description. This is a long video. Let's have a look. Glucose fructose syrup is an ingredient in Twinkies. This is with Diabetes Talk. Glucose fructose syrup banned in the UK from April the 4th, 2018. Let's have a look what they've got to say. Corn syrup to invade the EU. The taste may be similar, but soft drinks in Europe and are different in one specific way from sodas consumed by Americans. Now, Twinkies are American. I can remember 
fat policemen sat in cars waiting for jaywalkers to go by, eating donuts, drinking coffee and, and eating Twinkies. Okay, it's well known. In the United States, they're mostly sweetened with isoglucose syrup. What on earth is isoglucose syrup? Made from wheat and corn. Traditionally, Europe prefers natural sugar and not just because of the tight quotas imposed by the European Union on the import of high fructose corn syrup. The best known isoglucose variety. That may all be about to change until now. Isoglucose production has been capped at around 700,000 tonnes, less than 5% of the sugar produced in the EU. In the US, it accounts for 50%. Beet sugar, hugely dominant in Europe, if nowhere else, has been capped at 13 million tonnes. Both these quotas will be removed in 2017. Cane sugar, which accounts for 80% of sugar production globally, or flat earthily, has faced restrictions in Europe through import duties. Imports of raw cane for processing are limited to supplies making 5% of global trade. And I lose, use the word global in a tongue-in-cheek fashion. So, proper sugar has been limited. Okay. Of that amount, 30% is hit with a 98 per tonne import levy. These restrictions will remain after 2017 with the abolition of the quota on isoglucose. There you go. Which is generally cheaper than beet or cane sugar. The European Starch Industry Association expects its use in Europe to increase to as much as 3 million tonnes at the expense of beet sugar. The continuing import duty means cane sugar cannot hope to compete. Health campaign campaigners have long claimed there are health risks with, with iso glucose, particularly high fructose corn syrup, which they say contributes to widespread obesity in the US. The Alliance for Natural Health Europe warns that it's harder for the body to break down iso glucose because of its molecular structure, but a direct casual link with obesity has never been conclusively pro proven. Jamie Fortescue, Managing Director of ESIA, says. Oh, let's have a look at this. Okay, so it's brought me to this, different title, Corn Syrup to Invade the EU, there's no date, oh there is, this is from 2013, updated 2014, five years ago, Not more than that, now I'll just continue this. Jamie Fortescue, Managing Director of that, says the European consumers need not fear increased levels of obesity caused by isoglucose. No one is expecting it to take off the way it has done in the US. Okay. Well, it has. It's in everything from baked beans to ketchup to Worcestershire sauce, etc., etc. Fizzy drinks. It's in flipping everything. You can't get away from it. This was from 2014, remember. We are expecting it to be 15 to 20 percent of the market here, roughly equal to Japan. Americans consume a lot more soft drinks than we do. That's because there's more of them. Sugarcane producers say the post-2017 regime will unfairly benefit isoglucose and consumers would rather consume traditional sugar full stop. Some M M members of the European Parliament agree. Marina blah 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 a British Conservative member of the European Parliament is calling for the import duty on cane sugar to be abolished. Europe is home to many cane sugar refineries that now face a future whereby beet is unleashed while they remain constrained, she said. There is no shortage of cane sugar worldwide, just a rigid and punitive European import duty. The European Commission notes 
that the duties and quotas are not intended to target any specific source of sugar, but instead to leave Europe with a more accessible sugar market. A spokesperson said that reducing the €98 Euro per tonne quota could be part of a future regeneration with the World Trade Organization, the WTO, an alphabet agency. The end. Okay. Now, when was glucose fructose syrup invented? Let's have a look at Wikipedia because it's the only one that has actually got any answer. Okay. High fructose corn syrup, also known as glucose fructose, isoglucose and glucose fructose syrup, is a sweetener made from corn starch. Now we know the majority of American corn is GMO, so it's worse than pointless, it's the negative. As in the production of conventional corn syrup, the starch is broken down, blah, 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 blah. HFCS, high fructose corn syrup, was first marketed in the early 1970s. Now since the 1970s in Great Britain, the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s, we've had McDonald's, we've had Pop, Coca-Cola, and here's an odd one, the Clinton Corn Processing Company. Now, I'm not sure whether it's the Clintons, the Clintons renowned for child trafficking and lying in public office. Um, so it was, it was first marketed in the 1970s with the Japanese Agency of Industrial Science and Technology where the enzyme was discovered in 1965, a year after I was born. HFCS, HFCS is often compared to granulated sugar, but manufacturing advantage of HFCS over sugar include that it is easier to handle and more cost effective. That's what it's all about. It's all about price. It's all about cost. Does the price of your product go down? I doubt it. Uh, HFC 40S42 is mainly used for processed foods and breakfast cereals, whereas HFCS55 is mostly for the production of soft drinks. The United States Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, who have been discredited on many levels, and it's another agency with an alphabet, known by its alphabet representation, the FDA, states that HFCS is a safe ingredient for food and beverage manufacturing. We don't want American products in Great Britain. I'll leave a link everywhere. So what have I got here is high fructose syrup, corn syrup banned in the UK from 2014. Let's have a look. No, it's in most products now, I assume that's, no, it's in most products now. Even studies in the US are showing that it contains very high levels of mercury. Well, I can remember being at science at school in the class and Mercury was kept <laughs> under lock and key. We weren't allowed to have anything to do with it. The only, per the only person that could handle in laboratory conditions mercury was the teacher. Okay, you remember that? We've got it in fillings, it's in vaccines. And now, according to this, it's showing that it contains very high levels of mercury. Now, mercury is toxic. 
glucose fructose syrup the crack of sweeteners it's addicting Did you know that it's an ingredient in a wide variety of food products, including biscuits, drinks, blah, blah, blah. It's in everything, as I've said. It's known as glucose fructose syrup in the UK, and it's made from maize starch. Maize is one of the biggest genetically modified crops. It is now being widely used instead of beet and cane sugar. Sucrose as it's cheaper to produce and easier to blend for foodstuffs. It contains around the same number of calories as sugar, but it's thought that the body does not metabolize the syrup in the same way as sugar, and that can lead to weight gain. The obesity epidemic in school children since, well, probably the 90s, it became more apparent the naughties. Here are some products that contain glucose fructose syrup. Kellogg's. 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 Ribena. That's meant to be healthy. Ocean spray cranberry juice. Muller rice. Yacht play. Blah blah. And Coca Cola. Why anybody drinks Coca Cola, I don't know. And why anybody drinks. Stuff that's got carbon dioxide in it rather than, I mean, why don't they make fizzy pot with oxygen bubbles? Carbon dioxide, you know, breathing in carbon. I mean, if you're in a room and it's filled with carbon dioxide, nothing else, you die. Becky from Harpershire says, I was reading an article recently about glucose fructose syrup. It is causing more major concerns in the US where it is widely used. It is chemically altered fructose that is 10 times sweeter than sugar. It is becoming more commonly used here because it is cheap and manufacturers don't have to use as much. Obviously, it's chock full of empty calories, but there are also concerns about how it affects your metabolism and with some research suggesting that it's more likely to cause obesity. I found it a main ingredient in Jaffa cakes, which is worrying when they build themselves as healthy due to low fat content. Another example of how low fat foods rely on chemicals and sugars, the worst of both worlds in this case, to make them palatable, to make them addictive, to make you want more. Where next? Okay. This is the independent, independent, deadly fats. Why are we still eating them from 2008? That hydrogenated vegetable oil has been banned in two European countries, but not ours. Andrew Collier investigates. <clears throat> they are the cosy, friendly foods that present us with a rosy image of our childhoods. Quality street chocolates, an angel delight dessert, Horlicks instant nitric time drink and Nor stock cubes. As brands they endure, not quite as cutting edge as their more sophisticated and modern supermarket shelf counterparts perhaps, and certainly not as healthy. Because the truth is that some of the leading comfort foods we remember from our youth are doing their very best to kill us. That's not my words, that says it here. And this is the independent. <clears throat> the culprit is one item, usually tucked away in tiny lettering. I wonder why? No, I don't wonder why, I know why. On the ingredients label. It's called hydrogenated vegetable oil. It sounds harmless enough, but it is one of the most dangerous products ever to be mashed into the food we eat. Food scares are, of course, nothing new. Only hydrogenated vegetable oil, HVO, elevates health risk to a whole new level. 
Recent scientific research suggests that it may be responsible for an unknown but certainly very large number of heart attacks. Clinical researchers have discovered that investigating just two, ingesting just two grams a day of HBO, the amount contained in just one donut fried in this type of fat, increases an individual's risk of heart disease by 23%. This makes HBO much more dangerous to health than the saturated fats such as butter it often replaces. It distorts cholesterol levels, encourages obesity, causes inflammatory conditions, and can even be a cause of infertility. Well, that fits in with Agenda 21. Back in 2008, this. Another generation disappear. Yet despite the dangers, many major UK food producers continue to use it in everyday products. Brands that include it in their manufacture are Cabri... Whatever, it doesn't matter. Cabri's, Nestle and Mars Confectionery, Bachelor's Cup of Soups, and even Halibarange Omega-3 Fish Oil Capsules for Children. Well, hmm. Nor is its use confined to retail foods. Hydrogenated vegetable oil, or trans fat, as it's sometimes called, is also widely used in bakery products and by restaurants and takeaways where it usually does not have to be labelled and declared as being present. There you go, secret, secret societies. Given the risk, why do some of the country's leading food companies continue to lace their brands with this deadly ingredient? The answer is predictably simple. It's cost. Secondary would be convenient. It's cost. Plus, what they haven't mentioned is the fact that we got Agenda 21. Trans fats were discovered back in 1903 when oil was boiled to more than 260 degrees C in the presence of a metal catalyst such as nickel. The result was that its molecular structure mutated, Ooh. turning the oil into a hard, greasy, grey, lard-like substance, looking as one observer described it, like the skin of a corpse. <laughs> oh dear, and you're eating that. The original purpose in making it was to create a cheap form of candle wax as an alternative to the more expensive tallow. That this wax could also be used in mass food production was a commercially sensational secondary discovery. Wow, let's experiment on the public with tallow replacement. Hydronated vegetable oil may look and sound disgusting, but in many ways it's a food scientist, scientist's holy grail. How can a scientist have the holy grail? How can a scientist have a holy grail? They believe in the Big Bang. How can a scientist, scientist have a holy grail? Explains the health writer and author Maggie Stanfield, whose recently published book, Trans Fat, The Time Bomb in Your Food, tells the full story of its acceptance by the food industry. It can be used as an alternative to butter. It's a lot cheaper. It tastes, it is taste free. Gives what the industry calls good consumer mouthfeel. Okay, that is a, an addiction. That's an attraction. It's like putting on a pair of fluffy socks made of nylon. <clears throat> and last a, a, a long time, a very long time. An American TV program recently featured a fairy cake made more than 40, 25 years ago. It still looks perfect. It just looks perfect. And when it was made 25 years ago, it, it wasn't perfect. It was an abomination. These days, far less harmful substitutes are readily available, and some UK food producers now take advantage of them. Others, though, persist in their ways, and why shouldn't they? 
trans fats keep production costs down. And most consumers remain unaware of their dangers. And that is flipping true. How many people read the labels? How many people understand all this shit that is in the food you eat? The third most important thing we need for longevity and longevity over the length of your next breath. Believe him wrongly. But the real perils of our health lies in saturated fats such as palm oil and butter, which are actually far less harmful to the system. However, palm oil and butter is quite harmful to animals. And we know that. Some people don't care about animals. Same sort of people that don't read the labels. Given the weight of scientific, scientific evidence that, that has now built up against trans fats, and this is over 10 years ago, remember, there's an overwhelming case for the government to ban their use. This has already happened in Denmark, where legislation removing HBO from the food chain was introduced five years ago, in 2003 then. I, I can't work that out. Since then... The rate of heart disease among Danes has dropped by a staggering 40%. Gosh. The only European country to follow suit since then is Switzerland, which introduced a ban this April. Britain has no plans to take action. Why would they? Instead being content to leave the industry to get its own house in order. So why do we have a government? The industry are only interested in costs. It's profit. Simple as that. And a lot of these companies pay very little income tax or corporation tax. Will it do so? There is little evidence of any enthusiasm for change. Legally in the UK, HBOs must be identified on ingredients labels. But to most shoppers, it is, it is just. <clears throat> but to most shoppers, it is just another meaningless name. So why aren't the government doing public health warnings on their shitty BBC? Pardon my language. Like Albert Winsock. Public information films. What to do in a nuclear explosion. Why aren't they doing this instead of peddling paedophilic flipping tendencies? There is nothing to indicate that it is hazardous to health. Ooh. A voluntary deal was forged last year by major food retailers. But it only commits to them removing HGBOs from own label products. So that's being secretive like those special people. There is evidence that the deal is already being broken. Well, it's a, it's a do what they will sort of deal, isn't it? Having researched the topic thoroughly, Maggie Stansfield is, Stansfield is convinced that the only safe amount of HBO we should be eating is no HBO at all. When we eat trans fats, our cells get confused. They identify the fat as unsaturated. It comes from vegetable oil, after all. But because of the industrial process involved, they can't handle the fats as they would tr a truly unsaturated one. Instead, HBO actually changes the cell structure, making the wall soft and acts like a pincer, raising bad cholesterol on the one hand, lowering good on the other. So the gap is widened, making us more vulnerable to heart disease. Stansfield believes, Stansfield believes that it suits the food industry to keep trans fats a trade secret. Oh dear. Uh, I can't argue with that. Doing little or nothing to flag them up. They're, hu they're hugely useful to the industry as they have a shelf life of years. Don't add unwanted flavour. Don't need to be chilled and are very cheap. Unlike the natural alternative. If it's the third most important thing in your life, food, after fresh air and clean water, you should be investing in the best you can afford before 
your massive great telly and your upgrade of car. Blah, blah. Unlike the natural alternative, a chip shop can deep fry a HBO for a month, for example, where vegetable oil must be changed every few days. Given that there is conclusive evidence of the damage HBO does, Stansfield adds an EU-wide wide ban is imperative. What are we waiting for? Denmark has led the way and the rest of Europe needs to get rid of these killer fats now. And that's it. For there. Oh, I'm tempted. The Queen cancelled Prince Andrew's 60th birthday party. Because no children would want to turn up and help him blow his candle out. <clears throat> Next. Dun, 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 dun. Da, da, da. E twenty E one twenty nine Allura Red AC Allura Red is an orange red synthesized azo dye believed to produce a slightly less severe reaction by asthmatics and individuals who are intolerant to aspirin. However, however, Allura Red has also been linked to cancer in laboratory animals, and the substance has been banned in Austria, Belgium. Denmark, France, Germany, Norway, Sweden, and Switzerland. Now, if we're members of the EU, shouldn't that be a blanket ban? Question mark. Individuals with skin sensitivities are advised to avoid Allura Red. Now, why isn't it that, that on the Twinkies box? Insert here. Okay, why isn't it on the Twinkies box? All this for flipping information. Products that may contain E129. Biscuits, cake mixes, condiments, confectionery and sweets, cosmetics, dairy products, drugs, drugs, medication. Oh, medication, that's what we need. Fruit flavoured fillings, gelatin, puddings. Actually, read 129. What's next? E102. Tartrazine is a bright yellow orange colouring. Why should things need to be coloured just to make them attractive? Answer me that. Tartrazine. Tartrazine is a bright yellow orange colouring that is banned in Norway and Austria. It can cause asthma, anxiety, behavioural issues, blurred vision, depression, hyperactivity, migraine, skin rashes, chromosal, chromosomal damage to the fetus, part of Agenda 21, thyroid cancer, and can adversely affect those that are allergic to aspirin. Okie doke. Products that may contain E102. Alcoholic mixers, beer, breakfast cereals, butter, cheeses, chicken broth, confectionery, cosmetics, body washes, condiments, conditioners, apologies, moisturizers, shampoos, shaving creams, crackers and crisps, fizzy drinks, frosting, ice cream and ice lollies, jelly, macaroni cheese, milk, Pancake mix, pasta, pickles, ready meals with cheese flavourings, vitamin supplements, chewable, yoghurt. And that is your 102. What's next? Diglycerides. Now what on earth are diglycerides? E471. Is it on there? Insert here. Yes, it is. What is it? 
Let's have a look. Dun 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 dun. Da da da. Ooh. December the eighteenth. Not even a year away. All past. Twenty eighteen. Lifestrong dot com. Credible? I don't know. I've just searched. It's up, so it must be some truth to it. You may be getting more mono and diglycerides than you should. Let's have a look. Foods that haven't been processed at all don't last forever. We don't expect them to. There is a cycle with food, vegetables. There's an annual cycle. Think about fruits, vegetables and proteins such as chicken or eggs. Therefore, food manufacturers typically use monoglycerides glycerides, and digly, diglycerides flipping heck, uh, <clears throat> to extend a product's shelf life. Though monoglycerides occur naturally in some foods that contain plant or animal fats or oils, these additives serve as emulsifiers painting and decorating which combine ingredients containing fat with those with water emulsion paint which naturally repel each other made in part of fatty acids mono and diglycerides are similar to triglycerides the predominant fat in food according to the Harvard TH Chan School of Public Health except they are classified as emulsifiers rather than lipids. This is all news to me. Oh, look. My little child, I'm going to make her a, ma a healthy meal out of this box of ingredients. Okay. The good old days, make to amend, before all these flipping jars of chemicals hit the market because people were too busy to make food because they had to work longer hours because the cost of living is going up and why why isn't it going down we're meant to be evolving that's another time video of the day antioxidant rich i won't go there links will be here if you're interested Foods containing mono and diglycerides. I'll call them DGs from now on. DGCs, okay? DGCs. Monoglycerides and DGCs in food are typically in those that are processed and packaged. Some of which are the least healthy food products on the market. This includes baked goods, soft drinks, candy, gum, whipped cream, ice cream, margarine, margarine and shortening. In fact, a 2017 study published in the Journal of Experimental Experimental Food Chemistry noted that monoglycerides and DGCs are around 70% of emulsifiers used in the US food industry. Only I know everybody in the US knows this already. It's just the great British that are in the dark. The risks or the risk of trans fats. Trans fats have been associated with increased risk of numerous diseases, including heart attack, heart diseases, stroke and diabetes. They promote inflammation and obesity, raise LDL cholesterol levels and lower HDL cholesterol levels. Made up in part of fatty acids, mono and DGCs may contain trans fats, either when manufactured in a lab or if they come from an animal or vegetable source. When exposed to heat for processing into packaged and prepared food. FDA labeling laws. In, 20, in 2006, the US Food and Drug Administration, Alphabeti Spaghetti, began requiring that all food manufacturers list a food's trans fat content on the label.
This law applies to lipids, like triglycerides, but not to emulsifiers like mono and DGCs. Therefore, even though mono and DGCs may contain trans fatty acids, they do not fall under these labelling requirements. That is criminal. That's criminal. Soylent green. This means a food may be labelled as possessing 0% trans fat, yet still contain trans fatty acids from mono and diglycerides. Other additives in food. Many different chemicals may be used in the process of manufacturing mono and DGCs that are still present in the final product. Ooh. Among the most pre prevalent is hardened palm oil or palm oil exposed to hydrogen and high temperatures, a process that forms trans fats. Other possible compounds, possible, added in the making of mono and DGCs include nickel, tartaric acid, synthetic, that's man-made, man-made, not God made, lactic acid, ricinus, fatty acids, and sodium hydroxide, each of which may pose health risks. I'll repeat that. Each of which may pose health risks. However, an insufficient number of studies have been done on the potential health dangers of these compounds. I believe that's the end. Now, don't forget, this is from a year ago, less than a year ago, and it's still in Twinkies. What's next? Hostess Brands, the manufacturer of Twinkies. Hostess Brands is an American bakery company formed in June 2013. It owns several bakeries in the United States that produce snack cakes under the Hostess and Dolly Madison brand names. It is headquartered in Kansas City, Missouri and is 50% owned by HB Holdings, LLC, a venture set up by Apollo Global Management. This is quite important. And C. Dean Metropolis and Company. I can't remember if there's anything down here. I will leave a link. I don't think I've come down this far. We've got. Oh, they, so they have rolled out. In 2017, the company rolled out a new ups, upscale line of snacks. So if you can afford their upscaled line of snacks, if you're not poor, not through the fault of your own, through the indoctrination, through the way you've been brought up by the government. Don't forget, they had you from the age of six. They had me from the age of five. With no... And so I'll re reiterate this. In 2017, the company rolled out a new upscale line of snacks called Hostess Bakery Petites with no high fructose corn syrup or artificial fla flavors. The new line was credited with an increase in revenue. There you go. More expensive. For the fourth quarter of 2017 for the company. On February the 1st, 2018, Hostess announced that it had acquired the Big Texas and the Clover Hill Bakery brands from Arisia, or, or whatever. There's loads here. There's too much. This is going on and on. Okay. The thing about this company is they just buy up companies and then pretty much 
run them into the ground or use them for the nefarious agenda of poisoning people. Now, I think I've done with that. Help yourself. So what's Apollo Global Management all about? Well, do we know what Apollo is? We do. If you're in the know. Apollo Global Management, and I, I will explain it a bit later on. Apollo is the... Um, I will explain it later on. Apollo Global Management, LLC, is an American private equity firm founded in 1990 by former Drexel Burnham Lambert banker Leon Black. Leon Black. The firm specializes in leverage buyout transactions and purchases of distressed securities involving corporate restructuring, special situations and industry consolidations. The industry consolidation, they're consolidating the food industries into one giant company. You've got Nestle, everything. One giant company, all doing a secret handshake to form the deal, doubtless pocketing shitloads of money. Apollo is headquartered in New York City, with additional offices across North America, Europe and Asia. The company's stock is publicly traded on the NYSE under the symbol APO. As of October 2019, Apollo had over £312 billion, pounds, dollars, pardon me, in assets under management. And in 2016, it was the second largest US-based alternative asset management firm. Among the mo most notable companies currently owned by Apollo are those. Okay, read them. History. I'm going to finish with that. You can read any more if you want. Leon Black. Who is Leon Black? Dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun. Da, da, da. Da, da. Let's have a look at the uh, ingredients while this loads. <clears throat> okay, Leon Black. I'm going to wiki p -p 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 just because I can. So, Leon David Black, born in 1951, is an American investor and art collector. He specializes in leverage buyouts and private equity. He founded the private equity firm Apollo Global Management in 1990. He is chairman of MoMA. The Museum of Modern, Art, Modern Art is an art museum located in Midtown Manhattan, New York, 53rd Street between 5th and 6th Avenues. Okay. Okay. I didn't intend doing that, only that was that. Black is a son of Eli M. Black, 1921 to 1975, a prominent Jewish businessman who emigrated from Poland and was best known for owning the United Brands Company and being a professional clown part-time. A professional clown, eh? Well, we know what clowns are. Hey, his mother, Shirley Lubell, sister of Tulsa oil executive Benny, Benny Lubell, was an artist. In 1975, his father committed suicide by jumping out of the 44th floor. <laughs> you can't make this up. Oh, they probably have, unless he was thrown, of the Pan Am building. Whoa, sorry about that, but, um, whoa, in New York City. It was later made public that, at the time, federal regulators were investigating allegations that United Brands was bribing Honduran government officials. 
Black received a BA in philosophy and history from Dartmouth College in 1973 and uh, an MBA from Harvard University in 1975. I wonder what went on there then. He served on the board of trustees of Dartmouth College from 20... Might be confused here. From 20... From 2002 to 2011. In 2012, Black gave 48 million US dollars towards a new visual arts centre at Dartmouth College. Where is Dartmouth College then? New Hampshire. Career. Blah Blah Investment Bank. Managing Director, Mergers and Acquisitions. Well, we know what the banks are like for reacquiring people that are in dire straits with the money system. Not being able to get enough hours in a week in to pay the rent. Black was regarded as Junk Bond King, Michael Junk Bond King, Michael Milken's right hand man at Drexel. In 1990, he co founded On the Heels of the Collapse of Drexel Burnham Lambert, the private equity firm Apollo Global Management. Global Management, well, tongue in cheek. Notable founders include John Hannon, um, blah, 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 none of them mean anything to me. Black is married to Deborah Ressler, a Broadway producer and sister of Ars Management co-founder Anthony Ressler. They have four children. Black's wife is a melanoma survivor. In 27... The couple donated 25 million to form a new melanoma research alliance. Well, how come we have? How come people are getting more cancerous? How come there's more cancer in the world when all this money? There's people are pumping so much money into uh, research, and things are getting worse. It's been like going on for flipping decades. People running miles and miles and miles. Where's all the money going? And we haven't got a cure, and yet we can get to flipping Mars. In a car with rubber tires. He has a forty-three million pound home, forty-three million pound home in Southampton, New York. Forty million, forty-three million dollars. Sorry. In twenty twelve, he acquired Fidon Press, a fine art books publisher. Apollo Global Management had no role in the purchase. It was an investment Black made privately. Art collection, two months after the May 2012 anonymous purchase of one of four versions of Edward Munch's The Scream. There it is. What happens if I do that? And that. The Scream. Is this a shape of things to come? We've got skies like this now. We've got tidal waves. We've got um, people depressed. And we've got the poor, poor citizenry, oblivious. Is this an onion? Ah, oh, flipping act. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reported that Black had been the one who had paid $119.9 million. $119.9 million. That's a shed load of money. That's more than a shed load. That is so much money. That could do so much. Homeless, homeless vets, cure flipping cancer, for a pastel, they obviously mean something, 
There were four of them. The highest price ever paid at auction for a work of art. Oh, who? Okay, if you're interested, like I say, links will be to every page I featured. In September 2012, the Museum of Modern Art announced a painting would go on view for a six month period starting October. Okay, and you know, we're talking about so much money that could buy probably buy every person in the world a decent home and give them de decent food instead of penny pinching on all this garbage they're putting in their food. Why are they so... Why? This is why. This is how people that do f very little in life, very little physical manual work, use other people. It's slavery. And they keep them pauperized. It's slavery. And if, you, if you're listening to this and you're thinking of voting for Boris Johnson because he's going to deliver Brexit, you, my friends, are a fool. And if you think that, that, that all these benefits are slinging to um, pensioners, etc. Now, I don't watch television. I haven't got a television. I don't even read the newspapers. If it's not on the front page, I, it won't get my attention in the news agents. I very rarely do this sort of stuff. Um, well, I do this all the time, actually. It's only now I've started... Decided to record everything I found, or I find, somebody's going to be interested in, I know. Okay, this is all about buying stuff, okay? And how much money is in the world that is just being hoarded away in scribble, in scribblings, you know. Please. Wait the flipping heck up. What's next? Apollo disambiguation. There we go, Apollo. I'm going to stop it here. And start it again. I've got a 10 minute timer on my screensaver, so... Apollo. Disambiguation. Apollo is a Greek and Roman god of music, healing, light, the sun... Prophecy, that is guessing. Unless you know what's going to happen. Because you planned it. Like Agenda 21. A reduction in the human population of the world. To half a billion people. And enlightenment. This is what the all C and I is all about. Enlightenment. Well, I'm not a member of any secret societies. I promise my hand on my Bible as I'm saying this. I love Jesus. He has brought me here. You don't have to be a member of the secret society or of the Bluminati to be enlightened. Just don't use fluoride toothpaste, etc. Don't eat all that junk. Apollo may also refer to places, extraterrestrial, Apollo, crater, on the moon. Ooh. Yeah. 1862 Apollo is a stony asteroid. An Apollo asteroids. A steroids is just a load of rubbish. If you don't if you don't believe in creation by design, I can understand. NASA. Believe in NASA. Everybody believes NASA. Until you investigate Flat Earth. And take, literally, the design creation. There's nothing more beautiful. Man cannot create anything more beautiful than what has been created by God. Understand, this is the truth. This is the truth.
the truth. You believe it or don't. <clears throat> Terrestrial locations. Apollo, a town near Johannesburg, South Africa. Location of static inverter plant. What the flipping out is that? An HDB transmission system between blah, blah, blah. It's a transmission system, okay? It looks like death on a rope. It might be innocent. Just carrying electricity. Whatever. Apollo, Georgia. Georgia, Guidestones. Apollo, Pennsylvania. Apollo Bay. Southwest. Apollo, Pennsylvania. Just there. What have they got on there? Apollo 2. Apollo in the line of duty memorial. What was the duty? Well, we know what the duty was. It was beating the Russians into space. And they managed to do that with the help of Stanley Kubrick. There's no denying it. There's no denying it. Try. An Apollo bridge. That might mean something to somebody. People. Apollo Creed comes to mind without reading this. Uh, Apollo Coptic ascetic a martyr associated with, with a bib. Who is, who's a bib? Apollo isn't a Christian. It can't be. He lied and said he went to the moon. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, animals, Apollo dog, Apollo horse. Fictional entities, Battlestar Galactica, comics, Marvel Comics, blah, Star Trek. Who mourns for Adonis? Or Adonis? Character in Amory Wars, blah, blah, Apollo Candy. Sounds a bit suspect. Apollo Creed, Apollo Justice, contradiction, music, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. So Apollo is quite prevalent. Military, Apollo class cruisers, <laughs> Operation Apollo. Oh, this comes to mind earlier on. Operation Apollo, a military operation of the Canadian Navy in Afghanistan. When was that? 21. The, the, the Afghanistani war was founded on lies. Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Now, I promise you, I promise you with my hand on my heart... My hand, other hand on my left hand on my Bible, and I promise you on my eternal life that I am not a Freemason. I detest secret societies and I detest what they are doing from the Catholic Church. Just think, all these paedophiles that have gone un, un, uh, haven't had the judgment of the law. Okay, the University of Oxford, here we go, let's have a look. Masonic Lodge based at the University of Oxford, aim it. I hope I didn't press that, I did. There we go. Blah, blah, blah. Aimed at past and present members of the university. It was consecrated in 1819 and its members have met continuously since then. Okay, understand. This is what I'm against. I'm a teacher. I'm a creator, not a destroyer. I love people. I'd like people to live forever. <laughs> Honestly. And it's possible. Schmeyant. You get it? Technology. Just get it. Even Volkswagen Apollo was rebadged. A rebadged, a rebadged version of the Ford Verona. Okay. Apollyon. 
Okay, that's Apollo disambiguation. Next, this makes me cry. This. Um. <clears throat> okay. Now, some of you might be saying, "What has that got to do with anything?" And Apollyon, which I typed into this little thing up here, search bar, redirects here to Abaddon. Ab Abaddon. Okay, and that is where we've just been. This article is about the Hebrew word. For other uses, see Abaddon disambiguation. Let's just go through here. The Hebrew term Abaddon, Abaddon, <clears throat> Abaddon, meaning doom. So Abaddon, Apollo, Apollyon, means doom. And its Greek equivalent, Apollyon, appear in the Bible as both a place of destruction and an angel of the abyss. Okay. Do you understand that? Do you know what the abyss is? You should, well, you should do. Look it up. In the Hebrew Bible, Abaddon is used with reference to a bottomless pit often appearing alongside the place, the shell, shoal. That's the place of darkness to which all the dead go, both the righteous and the unrighteous, regardless of the moral choices made in life. This is what they believe, you see. It doesn't matter. It's do what thou wilt. You will ask where you will end up. Everybody ends up down there. Well, we've been promised To repent, make amends, don't leave it too late. It means the realm of the dead, okay? Do you understand this? You can choose, people can choose to believe the Bible or not. They can choose it as a, a moral standing with which to lead life. And... What I do and what I've done, I don't class myself as religious. I just am a Jesus Christian. He is my mentor. I want to be like Jesus Christ, sin free. It's too late. But I can go from now until my death being sin free. If it works, all well and good. If it doesn't, well, I haven't really lost anything because my conscience in this life, I'm not battling with a bad conscience, with an ill-felt conscience. Do you understand? That is me. I'm not religious. Religion, the Roman Catholic Church is a religion. And the Ro Roman Catholic Church siphon off children, physically and mentally and sexually abuse them, etc. They deal with their own criminals, paedophilic criminals in the house and what do they do? They move them out to Craggy Island and places like that out of the public's way and doubtless they ship children out to Craggy Island or Epstein Island in the New Testament book of Revelation an angel called Abaddon is described as the king of an army of locusts. His name is first transcribed in Greek, Revelation 9.11. Wow. Whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, the angel of death, the grim reaper. And then translated, which in Greek means the destroyer. The Latin Vulgate and the Douay Reims Bible have additional notes, not present in the Greek text. In Latin... Exterminians, ex, whatever that is. Oh, there you go. Extermin. Well, it was it was a pronunciation that got me. Being the Latin word for destroyer. Now, do you understand? Please say yes, Richard. I do understand. 
Okay, let's have a look. According to the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, Hebrew and English lexicon of the Old Testament, more commonly known as Brown, blah, blah, blah. The Hebrew Abaddon is an intrusive form of the Semitic root and verb stem Abad. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to read it, which occurs 184 times in the Hebrew Bible. The Septuagint, an early Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, renders Abaddon as that, while the Greek Apollyon comes from Apollyme, to destroy. The Greek term Apollyon, the destroyer, is the active principle of Apollyme. To destroy Judaism, Hebrew in the Bible. The term Abaddon appears six times in the Mesoretic text. What's that? The Mesoretic text is the authoritative Hebrew and Aramaic text of the 24 books of Tanaki for Rabbinic Judaism. Okay. Uh, so that, is that a bastardization of the Bible? Possibly. Abaddon means destruction or place of destruction or the realm of the dead and is accomplished, uh, accompanied by Shoal. I'm not going to read any more of this. I'll, if you haven't got a drift by now, this should, <laughs> this should sort it out. Oh, I just crossed it out. Yep. There you go. Christians combat with Apollyon. Now, Choose a side, please. Choose Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Or choose the devil. Apollyon. This is the difference between me and Freemasons. Oh, I've done there. Can I get out? I think I've frozen. We'll have a little look at this. Okay. You know, there are people, there's people are worshipping this flipping vile, vile personality. And if you think by pledging your allegiance to Apollyon, Stan, you're going to be gifted in hell. He's as devious as you are. He's as manipulative as you are. He's going to get you down there. He's going to do the nasty things that some of you do to flipping kids and other human beings and even animals. He's going to run you ragged until you plead. For Jesus Christ to come and save you. That is the truth. Because this fella. Slash whatever. I don't know if I'm being PC. By calling him a fella. But he isn't a fella. Because he's. They're not showing his tits there. Boat bust. Teats I meant to say. Okay. He's a boy. He's boy. Look. You know. The snake. The serpent. Research, just research. I think I'm frozen here. I think I am. No, I'm not. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. I tried it again. What I'm doing? Okay. Honestly, there's two choices. There's two choices. This is true. This is now. This is happening in the world now. We're getting persecuted. Not we as any God's law abiding person. As in just following a righteous path of goodness. This is happening in the world now. And 
what I'm, what this is all about is this is all about the work of this entity. Okay? If you worship him, he'll get you down there. And he will just toss you aside. Cut out again. Like I say, he will cut, toss you aside like a dirty rag. Simple as that. You will cry for God. You will. Will he come? I don't know. That's what we're dealing with, my friends. Right. How do I get out of this now? Now, that's it. I've read that. I've got that here. It's a good... It's a good book. It's one man following one path. How do I go oh, there? Okay, that, so that's Abaddon, who um, is is basically Polyon. Okay. What have I done here? I've done a Yahoo search. Apollo, Apollo Sun Worship Freemason. Okay. Nothing to hide me. I'm definitely not one of these. Sun Worship. Sun Worship. Sun Worship. Freemasonry. Statue of Liberty is Apollyon. Have a look. Okay. See, Nazi Black Sun, Heinrich Himmler had reorganized the SS as a Black Magic Order of the Knights, Order of the Silver Star. See also, blah, 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 after the pattern of the Jesuits, or even the Illuminati Order. The SS had taken over some very special magic rites from the Freemasons, but some rituals were taken straight from the Knights Templar. Now, I thought, I'm under the impression that the Knights Templar were protectors. But I'm not into all that sh palaver. If I can't see it with my own two eyes and hear it with my own two ears, and if anything that I hear and see, I'm not free to share and educate other people because I'm a member of a secret society, they can go and do one. I'm just not interested in it. I want everybody to know. Where have I gone from here? Let's have a look. Dun, dun, dun. Who the Freemasons worship? I'll be very brief. In their own words, over the centuries since 1717, when Freemasonry as it now exists was born, many authors have written against this society, alleging that Freemasonry is a counterfeit Christian organization. Some authors have even gone to the extreme, extreme of alleging that Freemasonry is of the Antichrist. Many other authors hotly defend Freemasonry, contending that it is Christian. Well, if it's Christian, you worship God and not the Son. Surely. And that it upholds the Holy Bible as its teachings. The Son is an idol. Who is true and who is false? Rather than replying upon the testimony of former Freemasonry members, we will go right to the source books themselves, published by Masonic Publishers. We will examine the writings of Freemasonry leaders like Albert Pike, blah, 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 and just all these people. And we've got the Masonic Bible. Why is it called the Masonic Bible? Philadelphia. King James, well, everything's bastardized. And if you were in power as the king, 
You don't want everybody knowing a few little secrets that are contained within the Bible, which is why some of the some of the books have been removed. Okay? I'm like, okay, we will compare the Masonic teachings from the above authors with what the Holy Bible teaches. God has repeatedly taught, uh, taught that we must weigh what someone is telling us against the clear teachings of the Bible. So, I'm telling you something. You, it's up to you to believe it, but all I'm doing is repeating what is, for one, is on Wikipedia, discredited, only all they're doing is they're openly admitting that Freemasons worship the sun, which is wrong, paganism. Uh, the Apostle John, writing under the direction of the Holy Spirit, warned us in 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Therefore, we can let Freemasonry speak for itself from its own writings and test their teachings against the Holy Bible to discover the truth once and for all. The truth is all about the truth in the handbook of life given by God to certain members of Earth. This week we shall... Okay. I'm just going to... You just read it and I'll pick out if I can... I'm just going to speed through it. Who do Freemasons worship? Whom? This is a mighty important subject since the God of the Bible clearly teaches that he is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. I don't blame him. Does somebody come in and take his children and will not allow any other gods or gods to be worshipped instead of him. So gods. Think of all the gods of war. They're all gods of destruction. Um, all these different gods, ancient gods. The sun god, the sun god, sun uh, uh, and god and the moon. People worship the sun and the moon. I just look at the moon with awe. It it baffles me. Okay, God's warning in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is Ju <laughs> God's warning in Deuteronomy is so instructive. I have reprinted it here. I encourage you to ponder carefully the words of an almighty God, creator, ruler, judge, husband of Israel, father. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. The end result of someone worshipping a false God is a consuming fire. Do you get that? The one exception to this prohibition, of course, is Jesus Christ. As Jesus stated, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. I shan't read any more than that, because all I'm doing is showing you the difference between living a good life and living an evil life. Politicians aren't evil. They aren't good. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any trauma in the world. Okay. What's this? Dum, dum, dum. Hostess Brands. The Hostess Brands. The manufacturers of Twinkies and other consumables. I'm not sure if this is showing up or bang it up. Not like that. So you can read it as well. There you go. About the company. Hostess is one of the largest packaged food companies focused on developing, manufacturing, marketing, selling and distributing fresh. Well, it's not fresh, is it? How can it be fresh if it lasts 25 years? Baked sweet goods in the United States. The brand's history dates back, dates back to 1919 when the Hostess Cupcake, aye aye, was introduced to the public followed by Twinkies. In 1930. So people have been 
I've been poisoned by this crap since 1930s. If Twinkies, well, no, wouldn't it It'd be in 1970s? Wouldn't it? It's all sugar since an introduction of that uh, sugar replacement. Can't remember it now. Can't think of it. My has gone blank. I've moved on from that today. Hostess produces a variety of new and classic treats, including ding dongs. Ding dongs. Now, in Britain, unless it's just me, ding dong is synonymous with a bit of how's your father. Who's that? Miss Alcock. Miss Alcock. Ding dong. Hello, chaps. Mr. Bell. Ding dong, you're not wrong. This way, please. And seeing as that these products are aimed at kids, it makes you wonder, does it not? Today's hostess produce today hostess produce produces a variety of new and classic treats, including ding dongs, ho hos, dirty hoes, donets, and fruit pies. That sounds sus as well. In addition to Twinkies and cupcakes. Okay. Other products. Our products. Okay, let's have a look at our products. Now, I think I did actually. Dum, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum. I think that's it there. Like I say, all the, every single page here is linked. Okay. So, this is product. Let's see what we've got. We've got Twinkies. The snack cake golden child. Well, golden sun and the child is going to be the sacrifice to the sun. Which to certain individuals and groups means death for the child after trauma. Cupcakes. I want my cupcake. Beautiful inside and out. It's all innuendo. Donettes. Donettes. Little dons. And what's a don? Round and round they go. What else have we got? There's a ho-ho. In case you didn't know, no. I didn't know. What's a ho-ho? I know what a ho is. So do you. There's the old ding-dongs. And mini muffins. Now, I don't know what a muffin is in... The good old US of A and the rest of the world, only in Great Britain, it's a ladies or a females down below. Snowballs. Innocent. They're probably not allowed to call them snowballs with a W because they're not made of snow. Although I've seen pictures of snow, it doesn't melt, so you never know. Sometimes in white, sometimes in pink. They're to be eaten, not thrown. Zingers. They lay it on pretty thick. Fruit pie. Make it disappear like magic. Paganism. Crowley. Jimmy Savile. Coffee cakes, because coffee loves company. Cinnamon rolls. Roll your way to happiness. It's... There could be a lot of innuendo here. And honey buns. All right, honey bun. Honey bun. Getting sticky with it. Okay, you understand? Do you get my drift? Where next? Board of Directors. What's after that then? Playtex. Let's have a look. Well, Chairman Director at the top is Mr. Metropolis, 
who has served as our non-executive chairman since January 29. So he's not even, he's, he's not been in there very long. He served as our executive chairman from November 2016 through to December 2018 and as interim president and chief executive officer from March 2018 until May 2018. From April there, blah, 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 Mr. Metropolis served as either the chief executive officer or the executive chairman of certain subsidiaries. Roundhill Investments, he's a chairman of a boutique acquisition and management firm. They're buying up businesses. Small businesses are forced out by the big businesses. And then these companies, it's like Monsanto and the seed companies, they're buying up thousands and thousands of worldwide seed companies. So they actually own the seed bank of earth understand monsanto and buyer oh buyer big pharma so there's a lot of it here he's been executive i don't know what you need to be executive of these massive places these massive um organizations Pinnacle, Log Cabin Syrup, blah, 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 blah. See, all these things that these people own, Aurora Foods. See, I'm not going to go any further down this list. Okay, this is doing my head in now. Am I near the end yet? Bloomberg, Playtex. Oh, Playtex came up. Now, why did they come up? Okay. Playtex product, manufacturing distributors and distributes consumer and personal products. The company offers infant feeding products, tampons and latex gloves, as well as baby wipes, sun care, sun care, rug, upholstery cleaning and hygiene products. Playtex products serves customers throughout the United States. So, why have I got that up? I fear I remember, I don't remember. What was that last? I'll stop it here a minute. Okay, so. I know why I ended up there. And this is uh, Mr. Metropolis. There was one, Burton's Biscuits, that used to be Great Britain. That just, uh, shone out, as it were, when I revisited this. We've got Andrew Callahan. Blah, blah. Sarah Lee. He, uh, he managed consumer brands as president of blah 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 Sarah Lee none of these really mean anything to me Sarah Lee I've heard of uh, and it's all about acquisition of failing companies in prior to joining Kraft Foods Mr Callahan spent seven years in the US Navy as a naval flight officer Blah, blah. Uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Wow. Are they credible? I don't know. You've got to remember, these people are actually poisoning the human race. Currently serves on the Rush University Hospital. 
of Chicago Veterans Advisory Council. Craig Steenek since 2016 let's go through is that uh, 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 Pinnacle Foods again ah I'm not going to go more uh, you know this could take for you can go for be going through this forever all these um, burrows Supply chain finance. It's the financial, the financial. It's the people at the top that are making the money, and the rest of you, including myself, because I'm going to be watching this, are giving these people such lavish, lavish, overindulgent lifestyles. I'm trying to pick things out here, and you can you can sort of read it as you feel fit, freeze it. I'm sort of just speed viewing it, really. Lawrence Bodner, 2016. Mr. Bodner has served as the Chief Executive Officer at Bulletproof. 360 Inc, a lifestyle company known for bulletproof coffee, collagen protein bars, and performance enhancing food and beverage product lines. I'm not going to guess at which ones. Okay. Blah blah. Chief Financial Officer and Treasurer of Big Heart Pet Brands, formerly Del Monte Foods. The man from Del Monte said, Poof, I had enough, mate. You can have it. They used to have such a good reputation, Del Monte Foods. What's happened? He served them for 12 years from 2003, increasing the levels of responsibility across the finance and operations functions. Prior to Damonte Foods, Mr. Bodner also held senior financial positions at Walt Disney. Walt Disney. We're back to the moon landings. Apollyon. Apollo. As well as Procter and Gamble. Now these, um, you know, they, they what they do is they produce chemical products, washing detergents. You know, what's up with soap and blood, a bit of olive soap and water? Instead of all the the ingredients that make your people certain people skin itch, there's something wrong with people's brains. He served on the um, board of directors here, a leading bakery, snack and customised solutions contract manufacturer for packaged foods, products, North America and Europe, only up until 2018. So he's had, a, he's had an input, and these aren't good people. They're peddling crack in those things whatever they're called speech marks oh uh, okay now this fella here or this lady whatever it is this person well you can't even call a person a person these days this this hmm I wonder if she's related Ms. Christ has served as a member of our board of directors since April 2018, from September 2016, blah, blah, Senior Vice President of Human Resources of Henkel Corporation. Human Resources. Which is part of Henkel, blah, 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 in Germany. It's, it's a global worldwide network. I said that with a tongue-in-cheek. It's very difficult to get out of the 
you know, like what has been 45 years, getting on for 50 years of believing that we're, we're chaotically spinning spinning through an empty void. It's got no, apparently it's got no barrier. Okay, this one, the Chief Human Resources Officer, officer for Sun Products. You know what Sun the Sun is represents Sun Products Corporation, a company she helped found in 2008. Prior to joining Sun Products Corporation, Ms. Chris, do I, I presume that's a lady then, female, loves unless they've changed that now, unless she's got multiple sclerosis. As Vice President of Human Resources and Chief um, and Chief Human Resources Officer for Playtex, this is where I got the Playtex link. You don't get this high up when I'm being unscrupulous. That's big business. You've got to you've got to learn to tread on people's throats. That's why I'm not very good at business. A New York Stock Exchange listed a company that manufactures personal care products. Ms. Christ joined Playtex in 1995 and held positions of increasing responsibility on being named blah blah blah. Prior to Playtex, Ms. Christ, Christ served in various human resources, talent acquisition, talent. Yeah, you've got to be special to get in this little group. And um, if you worship the creator and not the destroyer, then you are not going to get in. She had roles with New Power Corporation, Altria, never heard of those, Nestle, or Nestle Waters, what is it, Nestle, Waters, they think they own the world's water source, and as a member of Society of Human Resources Management at HR 50X, Make-A-Wish Foundation again. Make a wish foundation. Make a wish. You don't make a wish. What you you know? Ah, she's still serving. Okay, that was where the next page is. Anyway, Mister Defo Defio Defio. Twenty sixteen again. Since blah blah, founding partner of non non antum capital capital capitalism partners or central. The thing about capitalism, it's all about the self. Okay, in case that didn't come out, it's all about the self. Capitalism is all about the self. It's a competition to earn the most money, and money is just a load of old tosh. What are you going to do when it all goes digital? Blah, 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 blah. The sun products. Sun worship. Understand. Ooh, you're supporting if you buy their products. Look at it. Keep life simple. Save, save all the money you spend on fancy pre-made foods. And save it up and you can retire a few years earlier when, you know, in Britain, you can retire at 73 instead of 75. Procter & Gamble, chemical companies. Worldwide strategic planning. What the flipping heck is that? It's exactly what it says. It's planning, it's strategic planning. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to keep us stupid, ignorant, and ill. Laundering and cleaning. You don't need all these flipping products. A bit of white spirit vinegar, white distilled white vinegar, bicarbonate of soda, soda crystals. It's, you know, it's just fundamental, basic, single chemicals that your granny would have used or your great granny depending on your age 
Or are you still Unilow? Clorox, that doesn't sound very good. Driscoll's. Oh, here we go. In addition, Mr. DeFeo serves on the board of directors of the Prostate Cancer Foundation. Why isn't cancer being flipping cured? There's, there's so much money being thrown at curing cancer, and it's only getting worse. It's more prevalent. The same with Alzheimer's disease. Where does it all come from? I'll tell you where it is. It's diet. It's big pharma. And it's water. It's fluoride. It's... And now it's, or since the 60s with NASA and their sounding rockets, it's putting heavy metal chemicals in the sky. Aluminium shields the pineal gland, stops it functioning properly. Uh, read it up, pineal, P for P, I, N for knobby, E, A, L, pineal gland. Look it up and see what aluminium does to it. See how important the pineal gland is. And see what vaccines, see what heavy metals like mercury do to your pineal gland, amongst other places. Why haven't they found a cure for cancer? Instead of radio radiating it. Chemotherapy, radiotherapy. I've had radiotherapy. It's flipping horrible. I've lost between 10 and 20 years of my life expectancy and I was told that moments before I was going in when I had to sign the form to consent you will lose between 10 and 20 years of your lifespan instead of what I've lost and I've done it and I'm pleased that I went through it it was flipping horrendous I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Apart from those that siphon off the money from cancer research donations and just live absolutely lavish lifestyles and rely on people giving their time for free while they're taking hundreds of thousands of pounds and dollars per year in salaries. Just because they know how to manipulate. He's served on over 25 boards. I wonder how many boards he's actually served on that have actually gone under and have been brought up by this Apollo Foundation. Can't remember what it's called now. Blah, blah, blah. 50 different businesses and brands. Electrical engineer from Manhattan. College, where he also served as a director, numerous public, and blah 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 blah. But this is about Playtex, mind. Pool, I think this is the last one, Mr. Kaminsky. Blah blah blah, 2016. So something big happened in 2016. It might all be innocent. I don't know what happened with the company in 2016 and 2018 again. So everybody's shark tooth up the scale. All at the same time. Okay, there's some names here. I don't recognise them. Blah, blah. Vice President, President, blah. Global Dairy Foods, Global Dairy Foods. Tongue in cheek. You know, the, the dairy food in, industry is so cruel. It's, in, in, it's inhumane. Taking calves away from their mothers. Forcing them to have absolutely humongous... What they call them? Bladder is not a bladder, is it? Milk bladder. I'll call it a milk bladder. Udder. Which consisted of the entire Lake o Lando Lakes dairy portfolio. You know, taking, just amalgamating all these tiny, lovely little dairies that managed to, managed to um, you know, like we had Unigate and uh, the co-op milkman. And a milkman is a was a was an asset, a community asset. It was a connection between neighbours and reality. 
you know, Mrs. McGinn's, well, she hadn't taken a milking for three days. I wonder if she's all right, and you peer through a little box, and there she is, at the bottom of the stairs with two broken legs. And, um, you know, nobody to look after her, so the milkman. You know, the British, I can, I'm only talking from the British perspective, because I can remember, I was born in 1964, I'm 55. I remember, and you've got to think, by by destroying the independent um, and smaller businesses, they've actually, and you know, and, and selling milk in plastic. Now, plastic can't be, plastic ain't safe. It's not as safe as glass. All this, all this global warming stuff and pollution, all started when they, when you know, at around about the same time as the milkman went missing. You know, and all those jobs lost, and what replaces them? Because everything's getting mechanized. There's going to be pretty soon. There's going to be more people than there are jobs. We knew that anyway. Blah blah blah. Industrial foods. Well. <laughs> industrial foods just read into the, the wording dairy solutions you know never heard of them ok now I'll go and have a look at latex playtex playtex products Playtex equals latex. Okay, have you heard of latex? Yeah, you have. It's rubber. Uh, playtex products manufacturers. Oh, I've already read that. Is there anything down here interesting? Apple Inc. On Facebook. No, that's Bloomberg. Okay, I'll forget that. Let's go to Playtex. Wikipedia. Playtex, latex. Playtex is an American brand name for undergarments, baby products, gloves, feminine, blah blah blah, and sunscreen. Sunscreen has been in the news. It's been carcinogenic, certain types. The brand began in 1947 when International Latex Corporation created a division named Playtex to produce and sell latex products. Playtex was first to advertise undergarments on national television in 1955 and the first to show a woman wearing only a bra from the waist up in a commercial in 1977. Now there are probably a lot of people that were um, doing naughty things with themselves when the Playtex adverts come on. You know what I mean, don't you? Blah, blah. Playtex. Playtex. Branded tampons were introduced in the 1960s and then became the primary comp competition to incum incumbent Tampax. So anything goes when you're in competition. Understand. Playtex invented the plastic tampon applicator. It was one of the tampon manufacturers that were sued for aggressively advertising over-absorbent tampons, which led to toxic shock syndrome. What's that? It's a condition caused by bacterial toxins. Symptoms may include fever, rash, skin peeling, and low blood pressure. There may also be symptoms related to the specific underlying infections, such as mastitis. Cows suffer from that, and, we, and you still drink the milk. I don't drink milk. Mastitis, and, you know... Your milk comes out of a tea of a cow that's got mastitis. It's going to be one. And the other things on that list there. I'm not going to bother reading them. Playtex was acquired by Esmark. American Food Processing Company. Oh. What has they got to do with ladies, ladies appendages? In 1975. And then by Beatrice Foods. A year later, it was acquired for $1.2 billion, billion snakes, and its cosmetic brands were sold to Revlon. Blah, blah, split into two companies, Playtex Apparel and Playtex Products. Playtex Apparel was sold to Sarah Lee in 1991. That's come up, hasn't it? 
Look at it. Just look at it. Okay. Now, I'm gonna not going to read any of that because I'm getting tired now. But um, understand Playtex. Playtex is rubber. Latex. Now, have a look at this. The rubber tree. On the site of the rainforestalliance.org. Okay. In the wild, the rubber tree will grow to heights of 100 to 130 feet and can live up to 100 years. Its most famous feature is the milky white sap known as latex which flows freely from the tree when a, silver of, when a sliver of bark is removed. The rubber tree, also referred to as rubber wood, can be tapped for latex once it reaches approximately 6 years of age. In order to reproduce, the fruits of the rubber wood burst open when ripe, scattering its many seeds in an area spanning up to 100 feet from the tree. Here's a little one that's worth mentioning, did you know? Forests are home to 80% of the Earth's terrestrial biodiversity. We're, preser we're preserving habitats for endangered species, conserving wildlife corridors and saving breeding grounds. Please join our alliance and keep forests standing. Well, before I part with any money, despite the fact that, um, I mean, I'm not going to get paid for this. And I've spent all day doing this, my day off. Habitat. That is a species of rubber wood that is native to rainforests in the Amazon region of South America. Now, what's happening with the Amazon? It's under attack from fire. And we've also got, a, there's a company called Amazon, and they're famous, the most famous thing they're most famous for is the amount of boxes, the amount of paper that they actually use. I've received things in the post, I don't buy, I've never bought anything from Amazon. I was sent a gift, it was a package the size of a Swan Vesta matchbox in a, in a, a foot cube box. Amazon. There's a link. You understand it. Regions of South America including Brazil, Venezuela, Ecuador, Colombia, Peru and, Peru and Bolivia. These trees are generally found in low altitude moist forests, wetlands, blah 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 blah. Okay. Today commercially produced rubber can also be found throughout much of Southeast Asia and Western Africa. Significance to humans. Firstly discovered by the ancient Olmec, Maya and Aztec, the latex sap from the rubber tree was once used to make rubber balls to waterproof clothes and even to form homemade shoes. Today the latex sap from the rubber tree is still used in the modern processing of rubber and is often a substantial source of income for indigenous populations. Now we know how much the powers that be Um, how much regard they have for indigenous peoples. You know, if they're in the way, they uh, they just get exterminated. Just look at Palestine. Historically, cattle ranchers and rubber tappers have disagreed over the rights to clear forest land. The Amazon, as if you didn't know, is one of the main lungs of, pla of the earth, of the, of the earth. Cutting down the forest is not only detrimental to the species that depend on that land, but also damaging to the people that earn a living by sustainably harvesting what the forest provides. Many indigenous people depend on these sources of income to provide for their families and communities. Again, indigenous people depend on it. So what are they doing? They're taking away their, their sustain, sustainable rights, their sustainability rights, by moving in with bullying tactics. I'm thinking that money can buy creation. Okay. Understand that. Oh. Now this fella got murdered, I think. Chico Mendes, a Brazilian rubber tapper, became famous when he organized a national council of rubber tappers in Brazil to help protect protests against the clear cutting of land for cattle grazing. Now, you know, cattle grazing. Why would cattle need to graze? It's because people eat too much meat. Truth and fact. 
Thanks to his efforts, the Union gained the support of the Brazilian government and was able to set aside crucial extractive re reserves within Brazil. These reserves allow for the sustainable harvest of goods such as rubber or nuts and protect against the clear cutting of trees. See, the thing about the indigenous people is they, they maintain an equal balance, an equilibrium between themselves and their desires and wants. Not so much their desires, their needs, basic needs, and keeping earth sustainable in its own system you know that anyway here we go in 1988 Ch chico mendez was murdered for his work to create extractive reserves and protect the rainforest they just murder people that get in the way that's how they do it and they don't do it themselves they send other people out to do it His efforts have been carried on by his co-workers and supporters across the world. Well, I say God bless them. That was that. Where did I go next? Amazon rainforest latex rubber soya. The mystery of the missing Amazonian rubber slaves. Is that next? Nope. What's next then? Global developments. I'll keep that open that. And this is the Guardian. What are they guarding? The truth, that's what they're guarding, the truth. Pedophiles in power. They're guarding it. Everything. Amazon rainforests, final frontier under threat from oil and soya. In Brazil, in Brazil's least developed state, Amapa, locals fear that government plans to increase soya and oil production will destroy the area and their livelihoods. It's, it's your desires, not necessarily you. As the singular, only you, including me, as the person and the people that want more. What are they doing? They're devastating the Amazon. Now the fires, I believe, are caused to clear land. Cel Celso Carlos has made a modest living for 10 years growing a modest living. You know, I bet he can't afford a screen painting. I bet he couldn't even afford a screen drawing done by a flipping five-year-old. He's, you know, he'd probably do it himself. Made a, made a modest living for ten years growing manioc and coconuts and rearing poultry on a few hectares of low land in Brazil's northern Amazon. But three years ago, out of the blue, Carlos was told by an Amapa state judge that he had to move because his land had been bought by a businessman. Just bought. living more than 1,500 miles away, in San Paulo. Within months, fences have been put up. This is, you know, this is outrageous. I can't think of anything else to say it. And Carlos and other centados or settlers have been forced off their land. You can't own land. You can't buy God's land. Carlos' land, Carlos's land, along with hundreds of thousands more hectares across the map of state, is a new frontier of global agribusiness. It lies unused for now, but will almost certainly be sold on and used for soya production. The ubiquitous, ubiquitous, ubiquitous crop, which is part of most Western diets and feeds billions of animals, will most likely be shipped as animal feed to the UK from a new... A map of port. When's this from? This report is from... February 2017. 
Having swept through Brazil and much of Latin America, America caused an ecological and social devastation by displacing people that these people maintain and manage. It's like having a forestry commission looking after the forest. They're not, you know, these are sensible, sensible, nature, nature loving, nature appreciating and nature understanding people. They're not going to, they're not going to cut down the last tree because it's the last tree. They'll do, they'll, you know, they'll go out of their way to make sure that they don't exterminate. Ripping up the savannah and driving forest destruction. Soya is now poised to do the same in Amapa, Brazil's least developed and most forgotten state. Well, there you go. It's forgotten. Nobody will remember it, so it won't make the news. It may have done, I don't know. Say Sister Hagro, a Catholic priest. Okay, well, at least she isn't a Roman Catholic priest. Hagro works with the Brazilian Pastoral Land Commission to defend peasant farmers' rights, blames government, corruption and greed for what he calls a massive land grab. And that's what it is. The state, he says, is illegally redistribu redistributing land bestowed on it by the federal government and moving existing smallholders to promote large-scale agribusiness. It is then legitimising its actions by changing its laws, he claims. That's what they can do. You voted them in. You give them consent to do what they want. According to CPT research, businesses and spectators have, in just three years, registered more than 1,000 plots, making up 828,000 hectares, 2 million blah blah acres of land, which was earmarked by federal government for smallholders but not registered and will be turned to soya or fast growing eucalyptus trees for export to Japan and elsewhere. What's happening to this, you know, fighting global warming crap? He suspects the land registry. The land registered by outsiders has increased vertig no, that's a new one on me, vertiginously in a few years. It is a massive state sponsored land grab. No one knows, no one is doing anything he says. He worries that violence and land disputes will follow the land grab just as it did in nearby Paris State when the forests were felled and agribusiness moved in. Already there are murders. I fear a mapper will become like neighbouring Paris State. In five to ten years, if this continues, all the land will have been distribu redistributed to spectate, spe speculators and soil farmers. Deforestation, land conflicts and violence will increase dramatically. Wouldn't you just like to live like that? Too many cows for me. I wouldn't need any really. It's just maybe as a cat, uh, as a friend. Okay, I'm not going through that. That's quite long. That, but that's um, that. There is your Amazon rainforest forest latex rubber soya issue. Okay, where have we gone next? Oh, that was the independent there. No, it wasn't. This is Greenpeace. I'll put links, but um, let's just see what green why I picked on this one. And it's not there. Okay. Soya Greenpeace. Soya beans are an excellent source of protein and are an important part of many people's diets. The agricultural industry has also become reliant on these beans for animal feed. But the drive to produce greater amounts of cheap meat and dairy is accelerating climate change and destroying forests. Whereas Greta regretta. Why isn't she in there blowing out the blowing out the forest fires in the Amazon? Hey? Like palm oil, the global food industry has become utterly reliant on soya. The size of the global meat and dairy industry has exploded and soya production has vastly increased to meet it. Most soya comes from the Americas and nearly half from just two countries, Brazil and Argentina. Growth of the soya industry has been meteoric. 
Production in Brazil has quadrupled in just 20 years. The UK imports huge quantities of soya and globally some 90% of soya is used to feed animals, including cows, pigs and chickens. The rapid growth has come at huge cost. Vast areas of forests and natural habitats have been destroyed, replaced with mile upon mile of soil, soil fields. Converting forests and grasslands into monocrop farmland for soil release, soya releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases which cause climate change. Trees are very good at absorbing and storing carbon dioxide. So, and uh, fizzy pot, that's really good for storing carbon dioxide and then your body. So fewer trees means more carbon stays in the atmosphere. Think about this, when you burp or belch, whatever you call it, after, after guzzling a load of um, even Pepsi Cola, whatever it is, you're actually burping out carbon dioxide and you breathe it back in. Think about it. So fewer trees, trees means more carbon stays in the atmosphere. Huge tracts of the forest, blah, 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 blah. And again, indigenous peoples and local activists have been intimidated, attacked and even killed. And that's what they do. Okay. Now, oh, here's a bit. Since 2006, the industry has agreed not to buy soy from farmers that destroy the Amazon rainforest. Instead, what they've done now is set fire to it. And I know that. Same as with... Well, it's just fires, isn't it? It's all about money. Okay? Jidoki, this is The Independent. 2011. The mystery of the missing Amazonian rubber slaves. Two men brought to the UK to highlight their tribe's fate never made it back home. That's not a surprise, is it? You know, there are some people that just look at these people and think, you know what? We don't care. But I look at both of these and they they don't look happy not just because their mouths are downturned their eyes everything about them is distressed distraught I don't know whether they're children they might be grown ups Amarino and Ricudo were two Witoto slaves brought to Britain in 1911. They were among thousands who suffered brutal treatment and injuries during South America's rubber boom from Cambridge University. Amaro was exchanged for a pair of trousers and a shirt. Amarino. Doesn't it make you want to cry? How greed... Is so cheap. And Ricudo was won in a game of cards. You. The British public first met the embattled gazes of the two men a hundred years ago when their faces appeared in the pages of the Daily News. The British consul, Roger Casement, had brought them to Britain from their homes in Colombian Amazon to highlight the fate of their people. In the United States, Henry Ford's Model T cars, with their revolutionary vulcanized rubber tyres, were flying off production lines. Thousands of miles to the south, the tribes of the Amazon rainforest were being enslaved tortured and murdered in the thousands to feed the boom in the rubber that grows on trees there. Now, why doesn't Jeremy Clarkson do, or James May, or the, the little short fox hunting one, why don't they do Henry Ford's history? Why have I never seen this on Top Gear? Eh? I think I've actually seen them drive one of these, but they never went into this. Now Fanny Faney Quiro from the same Witoto Indian tribe as a Merino 
and Rikudo has appealed to the world to find out what happened to her two indigenous brothers so that our ancestor spirits can rest in peace. That, my friends, is why we are here. That's why I'm here. Mr. Caseman, an Irishman, had been working as the British consul in Rio de Janeiro when he was sent by the British government to investigate atrocities in the Amazon at the hands of the Peruvian Amazon Company and its British directors. You know, we've got a lot to answer for as um, a nation. I feel, I do honestly, I honestly, honestly, and it grieves me to say this, but I am ashamed of the history of Great Britain. I'm ashamed. I call myself British because I am. I was born in Great Britain. But I am ashamed of the history and I'm ashamed of the government right up till tomorrow and beyond. Alas, poor Peruvian, poor South American Indian, he wrote in his diary, the world thinks the slave trade was killed a century ago. The worst form of slave trade and slavery, worse in many of its aspects, as I will, as I show, shall show, than anything African savagery gave birth to. It has been in full swing here for 300 years. The dwindling remnant of a population once numbering millions is now perishing at the doors of an English company under the lash the chains, the bullet, the machete to give its shareholders a dividend. Please, please understand. Mr. Casement wrote in great detail of the horrific treatment of the Amazonian Indians, estimating that at least 30,000 people in the Putumayo region of southern Colombia have been tortured, murdered or forced into slavery. We are sent far, far into the forest to get rubber, and if we do not get it, or if we not get it quickly enough, we are shot. A Marino told the Daily News. A, pop a popular national newspaper founded and edited by Charles Dickens. London is very wonderful, but the great river and the forest where the birds fly is more beautiful. One day we shall go back. The men did make it back to South America in the end, but the last known record of their whereabouts shows them separated from their homes by thousands of miles of thick rainforest. Mr. Casement's papers show that he handed them to the family of George Babington Mitchell, the British consul in Iquitos, the largest city on the Peruvian Amazon. Mr. Mitchell wrote to Mr. Casement in March to tell him that on Merino had taken a job on a ship heading north towards Colombia. Ricudo managed to find his wife, but Mr. Casement never learned the couple's whereabouts. Many of the Amazonians' uncontacted tribes, many of the Amazon's uncontacted tribes, that so f f fascinate social anthropologists, are thought to be descendants of survivors of the rubber boom atrocities, who fled to remote areas of the forest to escape the killings, torture, and disease that decimated the indigenous populations. In some areas, 90% of the Indian population was wiped out, but it was not the actions of Mr. Casement and other campaigners that brought the, an end to the enslavement of the tribes people. The Amazon rubber, rubber boom ended because more profitable plantations were established in Southeast Asia from seeds smuggled out of, British, out of Brazil by the British biopirate Henry Wickham. As for Mr. Casement, he was knighted in 1911, in recognition of his efforts on behalf of the oppressed people of the Amazon and the Congo, where he did similar work. Well, a knighthood means nothing. Although, I take my hat off and shake your hand. Unless it's a funny one. But his experiences there made him a strident anti-imperialist and ultimately an Irish Republican. In 1916, he was arrested and tried for treason in the wake of the 1916 Easter Uprising. During the trial, a second and less lofty diary appeared in the popular press, which purportedly revealed him to have been a promiscuous sex tourist with a fondness for young men. As W.B. Yeats' poem, The Ghost of Roger Casement, recounts, he was hanged within three months. I believe that's the end of that.
I'm not going into the comments. Okay. Please. Put yourself in... Put Just put yourself in their bare feet. Honestly. What have I done here? Amazon. Oh, Amazon. The company I was looking for. I believe. Okay. Why is it called Amazon? It's because it's made of wood. Wasted. Amazon and the company. Down, 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 down. Almost there, friends. Amazon.com Inc. is an American multinational technology company based in Seattle that focuses on e commerce, cloud computing, digital streaming, and AI, artificial intelligence. The sort of stuff that's going to replace your job one day. It is considered one of the big four technology companies, along with GoOgle, Apple, and Facebook. Amazon is known for its disruption of well-established industries through technical technological innovation, not my words, and mass scale. It is the world's largest e-commerce marketplace. Al Assistant, oh, AI Assist, Al, 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 Aliens, Al Assistant Provider and Cloud Computing Platform as measured by revenue and market capitalization. How do you capitalize? It's not market capitalization, it's people capitalization. Amazon is the largest internet company by revenue in the world. How much tax do they pay in Great Britain? How much corporation tax? How much income tax? I don't know. I'm not going into it. It will upset me. It is the second largest private employer in the United States and one of the world's most valuable companies. Now it's the most valuable in money. Nothing else. Amazon is the second largest technology company by revenue. Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos in 1994 in Washington. The company initially started as an online marketplace with books, but later expanded to electronics, software, video games, blah, 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 blah. In 2015, Amazon surpassed Walmart as the most valuable retailer in the United States. In 2017, Amazon acquired Whole Foods Market. They've gone into the food market, the food industry. Austin, Texas. Oh, so it sells products free from hydrogenated fats and artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives. A user SDA certified organic grocery in the United States for $13.4 billion. Billion snakes, serpents, which vastly increased Amazon's presence as a brick and mortar retailer. In 2018, Bezos announced that its two day delivery service, Amazon Prime, had surpassed 100 million subscribers worldwide. Amazon distributes downloads and streaming of video, music, audiobooks, blah, 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 blah. It produces consumer electronics, including Kindle, blah, 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 blah. Among various controversies, the company has been criticized for technological surveillance overreach, a hyper-competitive and demanding work culture, and competitive practices and also tax avoidance. Tax avoidance is the legal usage of the tax regime in a single territory to one's own advantage to reduce the amount of tax that is payable by means that are within the law. It's um, immoral. It's just somebody with no morals, uh, uh, with no morals, no sense of fair play and equality. It's all about greed, all about the self, all about do as thy will. All about the Crowleys. Blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, Microsoft is located there, so, you know, Amazon, what have they got? Elastic Compute Cloud. I've seen enough of this. Really? There's Jeff Bezos. Partnerships. In 2000, US toy retailer Toys R Us entered into a 10 year agreement with Amazon, valued at $15 million per year. That's a million dollars a week. Plus a cut of sales, under which Toys R Us would be the exclusive supplier of toys and baby products on the service. Okay. There's, lo there's loads here. Amazon announced a partnership with DC Comics. The Watchmen. Sandman. The Green Lantern. They fight evil with the aid of rings that grant them a variety of extraordinary powers. That'll be the... Um, that'll be that special ring certain people wear. When they're flaunting, they're flipping... Ways. In November 2013, Amazon announced partnership with, with United States Postal Service to be being to begin delivering orders on Sundays. That's you know that's family day. Sunday is family day. Traditionally, in this country, as, for, as long as I can remember, it's when all the fa now sh the, the Tories, Thatcher, I can't remember who it was, legalized. A Sunday opening, which which meant it's a break up again, it's a breakdown of the social system. It's a breakdown of the family. Mum's gone to work, so we've got to eat shit from McDonald's. People see it as a treat. I think a, a treat is having your family together, having a nice cook, cook meal like Thanksgiving. They do it in America, big Thanksgiving. We have Christmas lunch, and it used to be Sunday lunch every week, catching up. Going to church, you know, somebody somebody has to work because they're struggling. They got to do two jobs, three jobs, and they they're a regular church goer. Whatever you think of the church service, it is a congregating of human beings, and fundamentally, if you're a, going to a church, a Christian church, you're there because you love Jesus Christ, and all the all the add-ons that the you know, the, the the individual church churches and denominations, you know, their interpretations of the Bible, it's neither here nor there, as long as people realise I'm here for Jesus Christ. Including Amazon's standard shipping rates, blah, 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 blah. Phoenix, is Phoenix up. Phoenix is the capital and most popular city in Arizona. Nike. Nike. You know, why do people pay, you know, what extortion amount of money for somebody that for a, a product that you know they're not the only ones owning? I've seen, I think I've seen tr uh, Nike pumps for sale, like a thousand quid. I think a thousand quid, not a thousand dollars, a thousand quid. You know, you'd be better off getting a, like a little independent person, little business to actually make you tailor made instead of buying that flipping rubbish. That somebody else in the world has got. It's not unique. It's not bespoke. You're just a slave. <clears throat> There's all that there. What else have they done? Products and services. Let's have a look quickly. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Subsidiaries. Maritime. Oh. Here we go. The United States Federal Maritime Commission is an independent federal agency based in Washington, D.C. that is responsible for the reg regulation of ocean-borne international transportation of the U.S. Maritime law. Okay. Audible. Beijing, Century, blah, blah, blah. It's all there. I'm particularly looking for... Um, I've had enough of this. You know, I'm 
What did Delaware boy, what did Delaware? What did Delaware boy, what did Delaware? She wore a brand new jersey, she wore a brand new jersey, she wore a brand new jersey, that's what she did wear. Apple. I don't know where Apple come into it, but it has, and I know why Apple's come into it, because they're another flipping giant. Now, look at the logo. What have I done there? Okay. Look at the logo. Fruit with a bite out of it. Now, I've been reliably informed that, in, that um, Eve didn't take a bite out of an apple. It was it's, it's a fruit. Okay. What we have got is um, Snow White. She took a bite out of an apple and it, it was poisoned. <laughs> is there a connection? Yes, there is. Apple Inc. is an American multinational technology company. Blah, 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 blah. It is considered one of the four big tech companies along with Amazon, Google, and Facebook. Okay. Companies' hardware products include the iPhone, II phone, smartphone, iTablet, the Mac, iPod, blah, blah, Apple Watch. Yeah. Smartwatch. And what's a smartwatch? It means it watches you. It watches your every move. It follows you down the street. Apple TV, AirPods, HomePods, blah, blah, blah. The Safari web browser. Keep away from that. You know, blah, 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 blah. Apple Pay Cash, Apple Card. See, they, they want your soul. They want you. Okay, Steve Wozniak. Was he? Apple went public in 1982, instant financial success. Now, I know they were um, opponents of um, Microsoft. But at the end of the day, it's all about vying for your business, vying for your, vying for your life. Well, Jobs and others resigned to found Next, American Computer and Software. Oh, look, they've got the Cube. Its name was usually pronounced as Next, based in Redwood City, California. Okay, if you understand the Cube, Saturn, all that jazz, it's um, worshipping planets, etc., Worshipping inanimate objects, you know, understand. Okay. You know, to me, this is just part of the, there you go, Huey. Um, now there, I think, I'm not sure what the position is with 5G in this country. Only they are... Um, sort of in the pipeline, or they were, I, like I say, I don't watch television, I don't have one, I'm boycotting the BBC because of people like Rolf Harris, the fact that it's full of crap, what they're putting out is false, they don't concentrate on the main issues, like, I, you know, I have, don't think I've seen, like I say, I haven't seen Jeremy Clarkson, who used to work for the BBC, I haven't seen him talking about where tyres, anything to do with tyres, even Formula One, you know, they don't talk about where tyres come from and all the people that have had to suffer just so they can spin around, whiz around at flipping 200 miles an hour on a racetrack. Lewis Hamilton, come on. You know what it's like. Come on, bro. Open it, open it up. You don't need any more money. Just drive. Drive and just... You know, you've got a cloud. You could probably be one of the biggest... Well, you are at the moment in the world. You're the biggest... You're the biggest driving celebrity in the world you can do this all these people any of these people that look through their one eye you know if you do that you're you've got to repent you've got to repent publicly okay i don't know whether he's done it or not 
high level of brand loyalty. It's an addiction. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't know anything about computers and all that jazz. Okay. That, did that get us to the moon? And back. That's enough of that. Now this is Nikola Tesla. You remember Nikola Tesla, don't you? He died at age 86. Now this is to do with inventions or discoveries that governments and the, it's the, the war machine government decide that they want. Okay. What did I go here? Exactly that. Where did I go? This is a timeline. Now I'm, and this is about his death. Now this is a bit morbid. Why didn't they do a painting? Why didn't they get, um, that fella, Black, whatever his name was. Do you reckon he's open to buy it? Death mask of Nikola Tesla. Now what does that, what is the death mask of Nikola Tesla? You know, free energy. I've seen it. Tesla dies at age 86. I'm nearing the end now. January 7th, 1943. Nikola Tesla died quietly and alone in room 3327 on the 33rd floor of the Hotel New Yorker. In New York City, the coroner would later estimate the time of death at 22.30. Tesla was eight years, 86 years old. Well, if you know your stuff, you know this. Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones, the order. Order 322, or the Brotherhood of Death, is an undergraduate senior secret student society at Yale University. Um, the Bushes are notoriously connected, there's, you know, with the Skull and Bones 322, the oldest senior class society in the university. Skull and Bones has become a cultural institution known for its Powerful Illumini, alumni, and various conspiracy theories. Is it a conspiracy theory? The Society's alumni organization, the Russell Trust. Russell Trust is the business name for the New Haven, Connecticut based Skull and Bone Society, incorporated in 1856. Owns the organization's real estate and oversees the membership. The society is known formally as Bones, and members are known as Bonesmen, members of the order or initiated to the order. Okay, let's have a look. 322. Can you see it? 322. Where have I seen that before? Yes. Here. 3. 22. Well, if you know your, um, if you know your Freemasonry, you'll know that there are 33 degrees in Freemasonry. 33 levels or 33 steps, but it, they call it 33 degrees, which isn't a huge amount, bearing in mind that the whole is 360 degrees. So it there, you know, they can only, there's a lot missing in Freemasonry that those that use geometry, Freemasons use sacred geometry, the craft of, the craft of say, sacred geometry, which is just drawing with a, I don't know, you can use a piece of string, a drawing pin and a pencil, and you can do geometry. You don't even need a square. A set square. You can do a set square by bisecting with a flipping compass. This is how thick they are. 
I wouldn't join them if they paid me. Okay, what else have we got? The, and the three, three, I'm almost near the end, only this is, uh, this is part one. We got 3327. Well, that sort of just immediately made me think of The Shining. Because 327, I thought, was the room num number. Okay? The Forbidden Room, 327. Well, it, it's not. Three, it, this was 237. Only. Get that out of the way. The numbers are there. You know what they do. They work numbers backwards. You've got your 322. Two. We've got the 33rd floor. And we've got 3237. Um, Just, you know, use a bit of artistic flipping imagination. Okay. And another thing we've got in The Shining... Amongst a lot of other things, we've got the cube symbol, Saturn. Okay, look up Saturn. I'm not going to do it. I'll save that for the next one. And we've got Apollo. Apollo. Okay. Honestly, people, here's one I just thought of as well going through this, and I haven't thought of this before, and it's not really to do with any of these circled brands. If you watched it, um, she's actually got a skin colour bra on that lady, swing coloured swimsuit, so she's not naked. These are dummies. But um, the food industry turned... Jack Nicholson, I can't remember what his name was in the in the film. The food is a prominent shows is a prominent part. There's numerology in it. If you look and just you know dig out a few YouTube videos on The Shining, and you just have a look at what people think, and people aren't wrong. It's pre-programming. This is what the Illuminati like to do, or the Balluminati. This is what they like to do. They like to... It's a flipping drama. They're playing out to the end times. This is the warning. This is end times. They don't want people... They don't want people going to heaven. They want everybody else to be in hell with them. Because they don't believe that they're good enough. They do as they will, they will in this earthly life. They live these lavish lifestyles. They bullcrap. You know, the monarchy, they are, uh, you know, I always say you're only as good as um, a representative of the citizens of citizenry. You're only as good as a person at the bottom of your management. And the people at the bottom of the management in Great Britain are the homeless the abused, the raped, the murdered, and yet HMQ, the second, is so, it's the same with the Roman Catholic Church, they're so flamboyant. They scoff at poor people, and it's the poor people that are maintaining where they are. Okay? This is true. I'm telling the truth. What's that for? Is that a, you know, there's just, all you've got to do is search what I searched for here. And it, all I was looking for was the room number. It's symbolizing and it's, it's just, you know, if they warn you, this is how it works. If they warn you, they can't do things without your consent. And if you don't say, I don't consent to being chemtrailed or I don't consent to being um, 
you know, to have the end of the world thrust upon me by human beings and not, um, you know, some sort of revelation or anything. If you don't say, I don't want the end of the world your way, I'm just going to wait for time, natural time to go. Okay, if you don't, if you don't say, I don't consent, and this is their advice of advertisements, this, this is what they're doing. And if you don't, if you say, I do not, if you don't say, I do not consent to this, despite the fact that they've advertised it in their own inimitable and manipulated and devious secretive way, they, then uh, you, the assumption is that they've warned you and you haven't said you don't consent, so you consent. That is how it works. Okay? So that was a 327. This is the bush. You've got um, things like Bohemian Grove. You've got the build, um, Bilderbergs. You've got, um, I can't remember, the, the Bullingdon Club. You know, famous for spunking out people like Boris Johnson, David Cameron, George Osborne. There's loads of these vile, vile, self-sanctimonious, self flipping, just self-preserving, selfish people. They don't want to govern you equally. They want to keep themselves as they are. Let's, I'll flip through this and then that'll be the end. January 8th, 1943. So January the 7th, Tesla died. January the 8th, the following day, Tesla had placed a do not disturb sign on his door on January the 5th, 1943. Ignoring the sign, made Alice Monaghan entered the room to find Des Tesla dead in his bed. Assistant medical examiner H. W. w. Wembley was called to the scene and after examination of the body gave his opinion that the cause of death had been coronary thrombosis and that there had been no suspicious circumstances. Tesson's body was taken to the Frank E. Campbell funeral home at Madison Avenue, blah blah blah. A sculpture was commissioned by Hugo Gernsback, a longtime friend and supporter of Tesla, to create a death mask which is now displayed in Tesla Museum. After learning of Tesla's death, the F and I this bit should explain it all. FBI Spaghetti Western. After learning of Tesla's death, the FBI ordered the US Office of Alien Property to seize all of Tesla's belongings, Tesla's entire estate from the hotel New Yorker and other New York City hotels was tra transported to the Manhattan Storage and Warehouse Company under OAP seal, Office of Alien Property seal, Dr. J John G. Trump, oh, an electrical engineer with the National Defense Research Committee of the Office of Scientific Research and Development was called in to analyze the Tesla items in OAP custody. New York City Mayor Fiorello, blah, 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 reads a moving eulogy written by Croatian author Louis Almanac live over the WNYC radio. From the background was coming the sounds of Ave Maria and Tamo Deleco, songs played on violin, spreading notes over the air. The violin played Zlato Velakovic, 1895-1965, Paid tribute to his friend Tesla. Tesla was accorded a state funeral at the Episcopal Cathedral of St. John the Divine at West 112th Street in New York City. The Cathedral of St. John's is the largest Gothic. Mm. Would he have liked to have had his funeral conducted from a Gothic cathedral? Possibly not. Accommodated the more than 2,000 who attended. The funeral service was opened by Episcopal Bishop William T. Manning and conducted by the Venerable Reverend Dusham J. Shucklebobbox, Rector of Serbian Orthodox Church of St. Saba. After the funeral, Tesla's body was taken to the Ferncliff Cemetery in Ardsley, in New York, where it's later cremated. Why would, it, why would they cremate him? It's to destroy the evidence. 
The second service was conducted in Serbia by prominent priests of the St. Saba Serbian Orthodox Cathedral at 15 to 13 West 25th Street, blah, blah. Based on their decisions on Tesla lectures in 1980-93, which were wisely published in translation, the US Supreme Court ruled in favour of Tesla as the father of radio in 1943, only a few months after Tesla's death. Some have speculated that the court reversed its decision merely to avoid having to pay any royalties to the Marconi Corporation, <clears throat> which was suing the US government for patents used during World War I. Suing the government, like Richard Branson. Nikola Tesla ship launch. The Liberty ship SS Nikola Tesla was christened on this day, September 25, 1943. Okay, now I'm going to leave you with Twinkies, 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 Little Star. It's your discretion. If you try and badmouth me in the comments, I will just delete you. I've had enough. You either accept some of it you accept all of it or you accept none of it if you don't accept none of it then please don't leave a, a malicious vicious comment because you will just be like a polyon okay just understand that i've got words blocked certain words the f Word and the C words, and the, all the derivatives that I can think of are blocked. If you can come up with one that passes, I will congratulate you. I, I you know, I've racked my brains. Any, any that are sort of remotely similar to those, the F and the C word. If you manage to get through my system, I'll congratulate you. I will. Add it to my block words list, but um, you know, you've taught me something, you've educated me, so for that, I will be grateful and I will thank you. I will delete your post. And educate me, please don't sling shed loads of links in a comment. I won't look at any unless it's it's uh, um, the title of the link is there. And it's um, a YouTube video at the moment and the duration of the video because I'm not going to click on a link that takes me to something that's longer than this. Okay, if it's five minutes, I'll, I'll possibly watch it. If it's 10 minutes, I'll possibly watch it. If it's 20 minutes, you're pretty much stretching it a bit. Okay, I'll thank you ever so much with all of me. For watching if you've watched this far i hope you understand the reality that we're living in okay god bless you all please see the light there's only two sides sitting on the fence you're going to topple off if you can't sit on the fence if you if you're part of this conspiracy by funding it you ain't sitting on a fence you got your legs dangling on that side okay jesus is peace he's peace of mind okay